Good morning, church family. I'd like to bring some announcements up. Next week on the 31st of July, our missionary Ken Sears will be speaking. Following that service, following second service, we're going to be having a luncheon at the Haas Steak and Seafood House. Resource table is where you can find the sign-up for that. Today is the last day for the sign-up, so um, please make sure that you head there if that is of interest to you. Our new church directories are finally in and ready for you. Um, if you've had your picture taken, and they're located in the gym just inside the door. They're in alphabetical order. Um, and there's a survey on the front of each book. We would appreciate if you would fill that out and place it in the box on the table next to the uh, directories. There's a night of worship and prayer coming up on Tuesday, August the 16th at 6.30 p.m. It's going to be at Genesis Church in York, New Salem to prepare uh, for the God Loves You Tour with, the, with Franklin Graham's um, foundation. If you have any questions about that, please call the church office uh, during this week. These past few weeks, we've been talking about um, the youth group's missions trip that's coming up. We're going to be doing a missions trip to a place called Operation Second Chance. It's on Heroes Ridge at Raven, or it's at Raven, it's at Heroes Ridge on Raven Rock in Germantown, Maryland, but technically Pennsylvania because the mailbox for the facility is in Maryland, but the facility itself is about a mile up a hill, and it's in Pennsylvania. Um, one thing that we could really use some help on is food. Um, food is kind of needed for when you go away, and you guys could help us and help the youth group to fulfill that need. We're going to be having about, we're not about, we'll, we'll be eating exactly three dinners during that time, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We'll be leaving Tuesday at 3 p.m. or 2 p.m. and coming home on Friday. Um, other things we'll need are breakfast items, um, sodas, snacks, waters. Um, but the big thing is dinners. If you would like to help to provide a dinner or dessert or snacks or chips or sodas, please uh, reference to the resource to the table as you come in. There were... Um, there's a sign-up sheet right next to the bulletins. If you have any questions about that, you can either give me a call or send me an email, and uh, I'd be thankful and uh, happy to talk to you about however you'd like to help. Let us stand and welcome one another as we prepare ourselves for worship. Well, good morning. Everybody's staying cool, I hope. It's getting harder and harder, I know. Well, we're happy to see everyone here this morning, and we're excited to worship with you. We're going to start this morning out with our medley, Let the Redeemed Come into His Presence, What a Mighty God and Ah, Lord God.
That's our set for this morning. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> From 1 Peter 1, 3, and 4, we read, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Our next song is Living Hope. Thank you. 
for singing. We had a little bit of a problem up here, but you carried on. Thank you. Ephesians 2, 8 and 10 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Our final song is Grace Alone. church let's pray together this morning O holy god maker of heaven and earth we thank you for the grace that is supplied to us each and every day we thank you for everything that we do and everything that we say we know that your grace is with us help us lord to be with you to thank you for that grace and to share the love that we have for you with each and every one around us be with us in the coming week and guide us by your hand. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our living hope, and our cornerstone. Amen. This morning's scripture reading will be from Philippians 
chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the Spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as the at- attitude of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being formed in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is of love, every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God. At this time, please open your hymns to number hymn number 43, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Children are dismissed to go down to the junior church.
last thing, I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, for those of you who, remember, who were there yesterday, um, there was a gathering at Connie Johnston's house. And uh, these words come from Rich. A great big thank you to everyone who participated in the work party yesterday at Connie Johnston's home. Everything on, on the to-do list was accomplished. Thanks to you. What a blessing you were to the Johnston family. Thank you again for your willingness to serve. Rich Funk. And as God brings communities and groups of people together to accomplish things in his name, it's not a surprise to me that everything was able to be accomplished. Thank you to everyone who was able to be there. Time yesterday, um, I got there late and I got joked about and jabbed about, but I took over for Rich's painting. Didn't do as well as him, I'm sure. But it was great to see uh, the transformation of the home. Thank you, everybody. And that's the body of Christ serving each other, and that's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move into a time when you've been worshiping song and prayer and heard the word read already. Uh, we're going to read the word in a moment. But we're going to spend some time just praising the Lord and also uh, sharing prayer requests. Uh, since we're a smaller church, uh, we, can the, we can make this more uh, of an intimate setting where sometimes when you have thousands of people, you don't get the opportunity to, to probably do this type of thing. So uh, uh, we're going to take some time just to thank the Lord, praise the Lord. And if you have a prayer request for yourself or someone else, uh, we'd love to uh, hear it and pray about it. Uh, and those that are watching online, um, you could probably just put in a comment there of a praise, thanksgiving, a prayer request. I'll see it later, and we'll bring it before the Lord in prayer. And the congregation that sees it, uh, they'll be praying with you too. Uh, but let me break the ice, uh, praise. Uh, some of you may have heard that we had a, we'll call it a COVID scare at the T-Ford house. Uh, Monday, we had uh, uh, two friends visiting uh, with us, uh, and uh, two days later, one of the friends called and said, I just tested positive for COVID. So right away, Lori and I went to Dover Lab up here and got a test done. Uh, test comes back. We had no symptoms. The person that called us was having symptoms and still getting over COVID. And uh, uh, so Thursday afternoon already, we had the results came back negative. But to be sure, I kind of kept to the house and to the church. No symptoms showed up. And then yesterday, we took a rapid test at home. Lori and I both came back negative. So that's why I'm here. If it would have been positive, I probably would have stayed home. And then Chris Doherty would fill in for me to preach. You know, because Pastor Chris is preaching in a couple of weeks. So we, you need to you know, change it up a little bit. I just really blew his day. But... Uh, we thank the Lord for this protection, you know, and we still are in our pandemic times, you know, and it appears it may be with us always. I don't know, like the flu or uh, like the common cold, this may be something there. I don't want to minimize it, but I praise the Lord uh, for protecting us through that. And um, I'll share a prayer request later from our household and family. Uh, but uh, somebody want to share a praise, a testimony, a thanksgiving, uh, or a prayer request. How can we do it? Cammy. With Florence, oh, when I heard this, the hand clapping, yeah. that's Florence. And my husband's suicide also went up at hand, so I'm just praying because that's my friend's family. Yes, yes, yes. Cam, if you didn't hear in the back, she just sang the, the the singing time that we have in the beginning there with the praise team. She's really touched by that, and we hope you are too. Thank you, Cammy. Anybody else? Yes, Arlene.
right. Yes, you've suffered quite a while with that pain. Wonderful, wonderful. And we pray for you as you grieve your brother, we're so sorry. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you uh, for the opportunity to worship you in song, and you've given us the gift of music. No matter what our voice is, it doesn't matter. It's the heart that reflects uh, our love to you, Lord. And we pray for our sister Arlene. We're glad that she's been given relief from the pain and these injections that she got was a help, was a blessing. And we pray for her as she and family grieve the passing of her brother, Lord. And we just ask your comfort to be upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone else? Chris. That's Ed and Dee? Die. Die. Ed and Die. Okay. Lord, we pray for Ed and Die. And Lord, we celebrate uh, the gift of marriage to them, Lord, and, and the love for each other, Lord, and just nurture that in a Christ like way in their lives, Lord. And they're not going to be able to be together again to celebrate their anniversary, but may they just have a connection on that day, a special connection, memories, and hopes, Lord, and just bless them abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone else? Praise, prayer requests? Donna. Lord, we thank you for your healing of Carl, and you're still more uh, waiting to be healed, Lord, and we just ask you to touch him abundantly with your grace and power. And Carl and Donna, as they celebrate their anniversary and what you've brought them through, what you've done and blessed in their lives, and Lord, we just thank you for that and what you'll be doing now and into the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone else? John? So this is some kind of announcement. And she's over there smiling. I'm not sure if she's blushing or not. So uh, if you didn't hear in the back, Tyler and uh, Brooklyn got engaged uh, a week or so ago, I guess, two weeks ago. Congratulations. I wanted to get that out last week somehow, and I neglected. So glad the father of the bride got to do that. Congratulations, Guy. Let's pray. Lord. You're amazing in how you work in lives and how you'll bring a man and a woman together. They will leave their homes. They'll still stay connected to family, but things will change. And, and how their love will grow, and Lord, and how you'll bless and challenge them and change them in the bonds of marriage. And Lord, we just see that and how the imagery of a, a man and a woman in marriage is an image of Christ and the church, the, the bride and the groom, Lord. And uh, we just ask you to bless Tyler and Brooklyn, Lord, and their relationship. Bless their families as they support them, as we support them as they move towards marriage. In Jesus' name, amen. No date's been set yet, right? Not yet. But I already hear you're looking at venues and all that. So all that's begun. So pray for the links. <laughs>
<laughs> Will you have to get another job, John, to add on to this? Give me a call. I'll tell you how it works. Okay. But uh, praise the Lord. Anybody else? Prayer requests or praise? Yeah, Alyssa. You already went, John. No. <laughs> Alyssa mentioned her uh, cousin Tiffany got married last Saturday, I guess, and uh, their trip and a wonderful time. That's great. That's great. So let's celebrate that. Lord, we thank you for, again, the gift of marriage and weddings and times of celebration and all that means, Lord. And we just ask you to bless Tiffany and her husband now. And Lord, just walk with them, Lord, as they seek you and your will for their lives. Thank you for protecting the family in a safe trip. Uh, and Lord, and just may you again continue to bless that household. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone else? Good sharing, good time. If not, let me uh, end with a, a request from my family. Uh, I keep in contact with my brother and sister in law, and occasionally uh, Corey, my nephew. As you know, he had an automobile accident in January. He still remains paralyzed from the chest down. He has full use of his arms. Um, he's bound to a wheelchair, uh, trying to learn independence in some ways of his care, self-care, uh, many other things. And um, uh, the family and Corey would really cherish your prayers. And uh, how can you pray? And a general prayer of just blessing uh, Corey with his mind, body, and soul. Okay, everything about him really just needs there. And, uh, and pray for my uh, brother and Mark and sister-in-law, Wanda. They, uh, since January, of course, their life has been changed a lot. And, uh, and his brothers and sister-in-laws, Corey's brothers and sister-in-laws, they have really stepped up. It's good to see family step up and others that, uh, that have stepped up. And, uh, but there's a still a lot needed, of course. And I pray every day for that miracle, for him to walk again, if that is the Lord's will. Thank you. You ask me about Corey often, and um, uh, he's now without the neck brace. He had a slight accident with his wheelchair uh, back on his birthday, and he had to go back into that neck brace. That's gone but they are very still attentive to the condition of his neck and spine. So uh, will you join me in, in praying for Corey and family? Lord, I bring Corey every day to you in prayer, and many do. And we've seen you preserve his life, and you've done a lot of change in his life. And... Uh, you're speaking to him and to family. And we just ask you to comfort and heal him in body, mind, and soul. Give him strength for the journey ahead. May he be attentive to the wisdom that is shared, the truth that is shared with him from many. I pray for Mark and Wanda. Give them strength, wisdom, Rest when they need it, and may your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you for sharing today, and keep praying for these requests. Um, if you want to turn in your Bibles, uh, Colossians 3, 1 through 17, well, I say if you want to. Uh, it's from the, I'm going to be reading again, like last week, from the New Living Translation. I just think it just brings a, a freshness of hearing it and just some of the wording of the NLT kind of helps us grab it a little bit better. So uh, if you want to turn there or the scriptures are on your outline there in your bulletin and also on the screen as we go through this message today. Uh, we are part three of a summer series called Declutter. Our theme verse, of course, Hebrews 12.1. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. So we're looking to get rid of hindrances and sins in our lives. 
And sometimes, again, I, I don't know if you recall me saying that some of these hindrances can be good things in our lives. But as we may be holding on to them and not letting them go at times, uh, they can bring us down and harm us and hinder our faith and our growth in Christ. And then definitely there's sin that we get entangled with that uh, weighs us down in running the race of faith and life together with Christ. So uh, that's our series. Uh, we are, last week we saw this uh, slide here, put off and put on. Uh, we did part one last week. We're going to do part two this week. Last week we were in Ephesians um, chapter uh, four, four, and uh, we learned about putting off, putting on. Today we're going to hear some of the same things, but in a, probably in a different way and a, some stronger language even in the, in the book of Colossians today. So we're going to also stop a minute and kind of go back last week to look at some of the decluttering principles uh, that we learned in Ephesians 4. And you're going to see some of this repeated, but also some additional strengthening uh, from the Scriptures this morning. Don't live as the world. We're not to be a part of it any longer. And you hear that from Paul often. Don't live as the world. You are now a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. So don't live as the world. You've been given a new nature by God. There was the old nature, the sinful nature, the fleshly nature. No longer are you to live like that. You've been given a new nature, new self. To throw off your old nature, you need a spiritual renewal of your mind. A spiritual renewal of your mind. And uh, next week we have Ken Sears coming and speaking. I hope you'll join us. I'm really looking forward to Ken speaking the word to us, but also sharing about what's going on in the Ukraine as he's been there ministering 27 years. But then the following Sunday, I'll be on vacation. So three Sundays from now, we're going to pick up the series. And I want to start focusing on how do you renew the mind and the heart? Actually, Scripture kind of combines them together. When we talk about the heart, what do we think? And it's like, really, as a man thinks, so is his heart. As a woman thinks, so is his, her heart. So uh, we're going to think about how do we change the thinking? Okay, we're not talking about mind control, brainwashing. Just what does the Word and the Spirit do in our transformation? So we're going to start looking at that in three weeks. As you would exchange old clothes for new ones, so you are to also exchange your old nature for a new nature by replacing thoughts and behaviors, okay? Uh, so off with the old, on with the new, and it's really kind of symbolic in a way of taking off the old clothes, the dirty clothes, the ragged clothes, and putting on the new, fresh clothes that are in Christ. So if you have your word there, you want to follow along as I read again, Colossians 3 1 through 17, from the New Living Translation. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew 
or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its riches, richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do, Say, do it all as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Let me take a step aside here. John, you had one more either praise or prayer request, and I kind of like shut you down and went to Alyssa. What did you have? I want to be respectful. Pay the wedding, okay, a collectible can help. So just, I didn't want to be disrespectful to you, John, so I wanted to, that's okay. So if John said part of the wedding is going to be paid for by a collectibles that he had in ba basketball cards to pay for a wedding. So God always provides. How I paid for part of our wedding, those checks that came for COVID from the government, we socked it away. Thanks, government, for that at least. Okay, so let's go back to the word. Thank you for that pause there. So let's start walking through the scriptures here, okay? And uh, when you, the, the points that we're going to see, the truths, the, the principles here will be in the box, okay? So we hear Paul say, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So we have this kind of focus here of Christ-likeness here. And uh, we've been given a new life in Christ. Okay, so if you are a Christian, and you are a Christian by accepting Jesus as your Savior and Lord, You've, asked, you've admitted you're a sinner. You've been forgiven of your sins. You've been given a new life because you have accepted what Jesus did at the cross and at the tomb. You now have a new life. And you have some new perspective. You have new focus. And you're to set your sights on the realities of heaven. You know, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say, May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want the realities of heaven that are going on to really inter to break into the reality of earth here. And that we really focus on heaven and what heaven would want, what God would want for us than what the world says we should be focusing on. So a new life, we set ourselves on the realities of heaven where Christ sits at the right hand of God, a place of authority and power, Jesus at the right hand of the Father, Think about these things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. So now, as a Christian, you have this new life. You're not abused to be living as the old life and with the world. Okay? So just again, be heavenly focused. Heavenly focused. You're going to have to live here. You have to live here. You have to deal with the realities of here. 
But you live with the truth and power of heaven and Christ likeness. Uh, I love what James, the brother of Jesus, recorded in James 3, 13 through 17. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy, selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. So, so James is saying you can either live heavenly or earthly. Heavenly, of course, is holy and from God and, and life-producing. Earthly wisdom, again, it's centered on self, bitter envy, selfish ambition, uh, it's the earth, earthly wisdom is unspiritual and of the devil. It's totally contrary to what God wants for you. So we are prevent, presented is, do I want to live as the world in the earthly wisdom or do I want to live in heavenly wisdom, God's way? What do you want to do? And again, we see the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Boy, that is so contrary to the world today, isn't it? You know, even ask your kids or grandkids about that. Which is what you see in your family, your friends, hopefully not your family, but with your friends and, and the world, you know, and start saying, what do you see? And I bet the kids, even the young ones, uh, will uh, say, yeah, a lot of the world is like that and not like what God wants for us. So we need to uh, move on to verse 5. So put to death the sinful nature. Or, so because you have a new life, you have a new perspective, new worldview you're to have. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. I like that word lurking. I mean, it just kind of sounds sinister, you know, dark. Okay, so it's really showing you some vivid things here. Have nothing to do with, here's what's lurking in the old nature. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of the world. Think about that, the, the sinful nature, the old self, what's there and what's lurking there to trip us up and enslave us. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greediness, idolatry, worshiping the things of the world. As we're looking at decluttering the mind and the soul, growing our faith, growing in Christ's likeness, we have to stop here and ask, what's lurking in my soul still? What's giving me trouble? What's hindering me? What's, break, what's enslaving me? The truth is, Christians do wrestle with this still. And it's getting rid of it. It says here, put to death these things. Strong language there. Verse 6, because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. Some of your scriptures will say wrath of God. The wrath of God is coming because of these things. You used to do these things when your life was still a part of this world. But now it is time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Again, how do I know if I'm living the old way with the world, or am I living the new way, new life in Christ? Just do an evaluation. Do an evaluation. My thoughts, my words, my actions, my desires, how are they? Are they pure, holy, or impure, unholy? So we're to stop living as the world. 
Verse 10. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Okay, so we're told get rid of, put to death the old nature, put on the new, be renewed in your learning, your creator and become like him. We've been talking about Christ. We haven't removed Christ there. Christ is your creator. He was at the creation of you and this world. And you have a new life in him. Then Paul just, I mean, uh, yeah, Paul interjects here this in verse 11. In this new life, it doesn't matter if who you are, Jew, Gentile, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave, or free. Meaning, it doesn't matter who you think you are, what status you have, rich, poor, uh, not worthy. None of us is worthy of God's grace and mercy. It's called grace. He gives you something you don't deserve. And you can't earn it. It's grace and mercy. So what is important, he says, is Christ is all that matters. It's not your status, what your heritage is. Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. Maybe that's a verse you need to memorize this week and really meditate and ponder on it and see how can I do this. Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. So I, I summarize it as discover Jesus. Discover your creator, all you can about Jesus. And it takes a lifetime. You know, when we get to heaven, you know, what will be revealed to us about Christ is going to be amazing too. But Christ is all that matters. Me pleasing him. If I'm pleasing Christ, I know, and, and, I'm, and I'm bringing it to my marriage and family, I know I'm doing the right thing. If I want to try to do it in Pat's way and listen to Dr. Phil, does anybody even watch him anymore? But, uh, you know, he's on there. I catch him maybe once a Monday, sometimes just on my day off when I'm taking a nap and I'll fall asleep watching. But, you know, you want to listen to the world and tell you how to live and direct it. There's some wisdom there, but they be very cautious. But what I want to know is, am I listening to Christ? And if I'm listening to Christ, I know I'll be blessing Lori, and I'll bless Abigail, and Mary, and Cody, and Corey, and Mark, and Wanda, and so on. And you, I'll be able to bless you as a church. If Christ is all that matters, and I'm following Christ, discover Jesus. Discover Jesus. Verse 12. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. We heard what the old nature was clothed in. Now see what holy people are clothed in. Tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. Hear that? Let me repeat it again. Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. The scriptures would call that forbearance, okay? The principal truth of forbearance. There's some people that you will just push your button. They'll be your thorn in the flesh. And it's just the way it is. Your personalities are not the same. You have different interests. They may be of the world. You may be of Christ. And they, there's a clash. But we still have to live with them, right? Because we may they may be in family, they may be in the community, they may be in the workplace. How do I do that? Make allowance. Give them some leeway for their faults. But it says, forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. How much did Jesus forgive you of? What sins did he forgive you of and didn't forgive you of, that he didn't die for, what, is there any sins like that? You know, I'm being tongue-in-cheek here. He died for all your sins. You know how bad it is, how gross it is, uh, how lurking it still may be? He died for that. He can set you free from it. You may, again, carry the embarrassment, 
And embarrassment is not bad when it comes to conviction. Shame is not bad if it's showing you your sin. And so we're told, remember how the Lord forgave you. And as you see others and their sin and how they treat you, you're to forgive them. It's not easily said, I know, and done. Okay? And forgiveness means I'm not going to hold this against you anymore. And it's, you know what, you don't even have to wait till they say, I'm sorry, that they repent of their sin. That will take time, the word and the spirit, influence of others, and maybe your influence until they recognize their sin and the harm they did. Now, the question may be, Pastor, do I have to be totally reconciled with them? No, why would you want to put yourself back into an abusive situation? Okay? Why would you want to put more pressure on you? You may need sometimes to take a distance, but you still love that person, you pray for that person, you forgive that person, and you maybe even look for, and not maybe, you look for ways to serve them. Okay? Because that's what Christ did for us. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Clothe yourselves with love, which binds it all together. And really, if we look at what we're seeing here, being tenderhearted, mercy, tenderhearted mercy, kindness, Humility, gentleness, patience, forbearance, forgiveness. That is love. All that is descriptive of love that's going to bind it together, bind our relationships together. And then, you know what? Once you get this peace and there's a harmony uh, created with that love there. And... uh, even in the setting of the church, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. As members of one body, you're called to live in peace and always be thankful. Clothe yourself with holiness, marked by God's love and forgiveness. Verse 16, let the message about Christ in all richness fill your lives. May your life be enriched with Christ, knowing him, letting him challenge you, call you. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. He's speaking to the church now. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. We worship together. We learn together. That's what the purpose of the church is, and to have a richness of Christ-likeness. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Share Jesus. As your shepherd, as your pastor, my goal has always been that you become more and more like Christ, individually, your households, and us as a church then we will be fulfilling the great commandments and the great commission. And with that, we can share Jesus to the world. Let's summarize, sum it up with some questions. Have you received a new life in Christ? Again, you've heard me for several Sundays now. This change, this decluttering we're challenged with, getting rid of the old and on the new, it won't happen unless you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that you've been born again by faith, you have accepted what he did at the cross, graciously, mercifully, powerfully for you, to forgive your sins, to give you a new life. If you you don't have that, this is just a motivational talk, really, and probably a poor one at that. But if you're born again and you have this word and the spirit, this is a powerful time for you. Do you need to put, what do you need to put off and put on? Last week we had a, in the outline there, I hope you kept it, there was a, a, from almost Genesis to Revelation, descriptions of what to put off and what to put on. And scriptures call us to that. 
This week, if you open the outline, you have last week's scripture, and you have a list of put-offs and put-ons. And this week's scriptures there, put-offs and put-ons. Use Ephesians and Colossians to evaluate your thoughts, words, deeds, and desires to discern what do I need to put off and what to put on. Paul said while he's here in the flesh, while he was here in the flesh, he wrestled with that sinful nature. So there are there were things lurking in Paul he had to still deal with. What is lurking in you that you need to address, admit, confess, ask forgiveness, and have be victorious in? What is preventing you from putting off the old self and putting on the new self? Probably many things, but how about pride? You don't want to admit your sin, those things that hinder you, you're content. You're content. And you may actually be born again, but you have one foot in the world, one foot in the new nature, and you're content with that. You dabble with both. God's not satisfied with that. Okay? He took a church in the book of Revelation that they were lukewarm. And he said, I just spit you out of my mouth like a piece of food that just dis- I disagree, just um, despise. What is, put, what is preventing you from putting off the old and putting on the new? And I'm going to be straightforward to you. Do you really want to change? Do you really want to change? And it will always come back as Christ, Savior, and Lord. Because that's where the new life begins. Last week, I challenged you to keep looking at this prayer from Psalm 139, 23, and 24. I'm going to ask you to read it as we close. Read it together with me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Lord, we bring this prayer. We thank you for the word. We thank you for your spirit here today. And Lord, we do ask you, search us. You know our heart. Help us to see truly what's in our heart. Test us. We're worried and anxious because I'm probably focusing on earthly things instead of heavenly things. And Lord, their sins, all sin is offensive to you. So help us to see our sin and confess and repent and live in holiness. Transform our minds, our hearts, Lord, we ask. Declutter the soul, the mind. Grow our faith. Grow our commitment to you, Lord. And may we just praise you for what you're doing and will do as we yield our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing... 366, I Surrender All. We're going to sing the first and fourth stanzas. I Surrender All. Will you stand with me?
as you surrender all to Jesus, may you receive his blessings of grace, power, and truth. Amen.